now till now we were dealing with the physical processes okay now we come to the to a chemical process that is a chemical reaction and how we analyze the equilibrium in that fine so let us say for any general reaction a plus b giving us c plus d okay this is the reactants reactants and this is the product <clears throat> now what happens if you track any of the reactant or any of the product fine you can do that you can track the concentration of any one of them or maybe if they are gaseous then the then the pressure okay then you'll find this type of a curve <clears throat> you'll find a curve that might look something like this so so here i either either track say a or b so it will start going down 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 and then it will become a constant at some point right <clears throat> it will become a constant similarly if you so this is a or b okay it will become that here we could be seeing a if if i if i see yeah it will have to start from the origin because initially i'm assuming there is there is nothing right so initially there is there is only the there is only the reactant so it has to start from the origin because in initially it is it is nothing right so this is c or d so any of the product you can track <coughs> and and this obviously is time okay this we are we are observing with time after say this point after this point onwards the equilibrium has set in is it not the equilibrium sets in beyond this okay that will also give you an idea for the time taken to reach an equilibrium fine if you if you do this and and then maybe we can reduce that time that is <clears throat> that is a different matter altogether but 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 this is what we do in a in a chemical process <coughs> fine yeah where they intersect their concentrations will become equal no after all this is this is nothing but concentration so at that time their concentration will become equal right this is your concentration fine <clears throat> so at equilibrium we'll have this okay at equilibrium we have this kind of a graph now you understand it it gives you another insight into the whole thing suppose we had started with only c and d okay only c and d then what will happen gradually over the time gradually over the time over the time c and d will reduce and a and b will get produced okay if we start only with c and d okay so then you'll find that at that point whatever was their concentration it will settle back to that okay so we could start with only c and d and seen that and and 
would have seen the appearance of A and B such that the equilibrium concentrations the equilibrium concentrations would have been the same okay would have been the same now that looks something that is normally not acceptable to you if you had not put these half arrows over it right if you had not put the half arrows over them then you would not have understood that this can also happen because otherwise what are we writing till now we have been taught to write the reactions like this is it not it tells me that if i start with c and d perhaps a and b will not appear but somehow that is not the case okay somehow that is not the case now this dynamic nature of of the equilibrium is seen by an experiment can be experimentally seen by using a heavy isotope right so so there is there is a very famous process that i have discussed about earlier it is nitrogen and hydrogen giving you ammonia and it was it was later it was later later it was later optimized by heber for which he got the nobel prize right <clears throat> now see what we do we allow n2 and h2 to react and form ammonia okay fine n2 and h2 to react and form ammonia and then we allow the same amount of n2 and d2 okay n2 and d2 to react and give us nd3 what is d2 what is d d is the yeah d is the isotope of of hydrogen called deuterium hydrogen has actually three isotopes right what are they yes hydrogen has three isotopes one is protium th that you that you symbolize like this another is deuterium and another is tritium the number of protons and neutrons differ here there is one proton and no neutron one each one and two obviously the protons cannot change because otherwise that will shift the place that it occupies in the periodic table and that is not possible it will become a different element altogether if it had two protons it will straight away become helium right now they both of them they react in the same manner okay now after the equilibrium has been reached okay you mix the two together okay after equilibrium the two are mixed together we we find that they are still in equilibrium there is an nh3 molecule still there okay the concentration remains the same of nh3 remains the same 
but if you do the mass spectroscopy you find but we find but we find the appearance of but we find the appearance of of nh2d nhd2 n h 2 d apart from n h 3 and n d 3 okay also also h d appears apart from apart from h2 and n2 okay <clears throat> now what happens it shows that even under that equilibrium process, they were undergoing some atom exchange. Otherwise, they should have remained as they are. But that does not happen. Fine. So, we say that, okay. <clears throat> then we say that there must be, does, there must be, atom exchanges going on even under the under even at equilibrium okay Again, the same thing. So, so the use of this isotope tells us we conclude that the rate of the 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 reactions, sorry, at equilibrium are are dynamic in nature. Okay. Are dynamic nature and the forward and backward reactions and proceed at the same rate they proceed at the same rate Correct? Fine. We understand that? <clears throat> okay. The same thing you can, the same thing you can observe with H2 and I2, hydrogen and iodine reacting together to, to give you, to give you hydrogen iodide. 